Hello everybody and welcome to the continuation of this series looking at high quality pieces of fiction and working out what makes them so good so you can apply the same skill set in your own creative writing. As we saw in the previous video in this series looking at the opening of Enduring Love, great fiction draws a reader in through making them ask questions. However, it is important not to overdo it. We never want to lose the reader completely by making things too obscure to visualise or understand. Today we're going to have a look at the opening of 1984 by George Orwell. It's a dystopian novel published in the 1940s set in an imagined future. First, let's read the extract. It was a bright, cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind, slipped quickly through the glass doors of Victory Mansions, though not quickly enough to prevent a swirl of gritty dust from entering along with him. The hallway smelt of boiled cabbage and old rag mats. At one end of it a coloured poster, too large for indoor display, had been tacked to the wall. It depicted simply an enormous face, more than a metre wide, the face of a man of about 45, with a heavy black moustache and ruggedly handsome features. Winston made for the stairs. It was no use trying the lift. Even at the best of times it was seldom working, and at present the electric current was cut off during daylight hours. It was part of the economy drive in preparation for hate week. The flat was seven flights up and Winston, who was 39 and had a varicose ulcer above his right ankle, went slowly, resting several times on the way. On each landing, opposite the lift shaft, the poster with the enormous face gazed from the wall. It was one of those pictures which are so contrived that the eyes follow you about when you move. Big Brother is watching you, the caption beneath it ran. Inside the flat, a fruity voice was reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the production of pig iron. The voice came from an oblong metal plaque like a dulled mirror which formed part of the surface of the right-hand wall. Winston turned a switch and the voice sank somewhat, though the words were still distinguishable. The instrument, the telescreen it was called, could be dimmed but there was no way of shutting it off completely. OK, so the first thing I want to say is there is clearly a lot we don't understand introduced in this opening. We have some big questions. The clocks were striking 13 goes against what we know of how clocks work and how time works and isn't further explained yet. The large poster seems important but we don't really know why. What is hate week? Well, who is big brother? We also have some smaller questions. Why are the lifts always broken? Why does the hallway smell of cabbage? But crucially, even with these questions as yet unanswered, we're still able to visualise what's going on. For example, we might not understand how a clock can strike 13, but we know what a clock is and what it means to strike a certain hour. Orwell is drawing us in, but he's not losing us completely. In the midst of this ambiguity, the opening also establishes character. We have 39-year-old Winston with his leg ulcer and setting a bright cold April day in Victory Mansions. But what I love about this opening is where Orwell does decide to explain some of the futuristic elements of the novel. Inside the flat, a fruity voice was reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the production of pig iron. The voice came from an oblong metal plaque like a dulled mirror which formed part of the surface of the right-hand wall. Winston turned a switch and the voice sank somewhat, though the words were still distinguishable. The instrument, the telescreen it was called, could be dimmed but there was no way of shutting it off completely. Because Orwell has created the telescreen for this story, he describes it in a way we can visualise. If the text just said, the telescreen spoke, it would either lose or perhaps mislead the reader because we don't know what a telescreen is or how to visualise it. If we imagine a television, we'd be wrong. So Orwell describes this device he's created for the story in a simple way using references to things we do understand, like a dull mirror. Now, how can you apply this to your own writing? Well, it doesn't mean you have to write a sci-fi or fantasy piece. It just means that you have to be careful to make sure the reader can visualise what you're writing about. Let's look at a made-up example where this doesn't take place. Justin's Arbitrang was running out of charge. He lifted up the Zebulacca, but it was clearly broken. What could he do? He knew that time was running out and without the much-needed combination of elements, the game was over. 20 minutes. Justin glanced around the room. He was the only one struggling. 
In this story, we just don't know what we're reading about. What's an Arbitrang? What's a Zebulaka? What's the combination of elements? What game is going to be over? Who spoke that line of dialogue? It's just too obscure. It could be some futuristic battle in a sci-fi story, and those are the names of weapons, but it might not be. How about this? Justin's food mixer, the Arbitrang, was running out of charge. Fantastic. Millions of people were sitting at home watching the Great British Bake Off final, and now was the moment Justin's equipment was going to break. He lifted up the Zebulaka power whisk, but it was clearly broken. It had blown a fuse the previous week, as Justin had forced it through the gloopy mix of his ill-fated rock cake. He knew time was running out, and without the much-needed combination of elements, flour, milk and raisins, the game was over. Twenty minutes, announced the host of the show. Justin glanced around the room. All of the other contestants seemed to have their cakes in the oven already. He was the only one struggling. Okay, so this is just a silly example, but it does demonstrate the point. We need to give enough information for the reader to follow what we're writing. Sometimes that means describing the setting well enough. Sometimes it means making it clear which character is speaking. Sometimes it means explaining invented elements. Remember, mystery and tension are great, but we have to make sure the reader can follow what we're writing. If you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.